Hi, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the Bison Video Blog. Along with Jeff Kolpak, I'm Don Mizzo, ready to make our annual descent down to Frisco, Texas. We leave on Wednesday for coverage of the 2015 FCS Championship game, Jeffrey, for the first time matching conference rivals, Illinois State and North Dakota State. We've had three weeks to digest this. The game plans are pretty much wrapped up for each team. Illinois State even taking today off before they travel on Wednesday. The Bison leave Wednesday morning as well. You've had two and a half weeks to pour over this. What stands out right away when you look at this matchup? Well, the first thing is I get to bring the hat off the <laughs> set. It's coming with, right? Or your tradition as well. Yes. The, uh, the tradition of the cowboy hat lives <laughs> on. But uh, what I see in this matchup, you see two really good rushing defenses. Mm. And they're statistically almost identical. Illinois State gives up 115.2 a game, NDSU 115.9 a game. Uh, you know, so obviously whoever gets a rushing game going will have the decided advantage. That being said, how is this game going to be decided? Yeah. It's going to be whoever has a hot hand at quarterback. Trey Roberson has been that and been some for Illinois State, Jeff. The uh, quarterback transfer from Indiana who came in and has jump-started this offense to the tune. They're scoring points left and right, including the comeback at New Hampshire in the semifinals. This is a guy that I, he was, I wouldn't say under the radar, but boy, he came on the scene. Was I, He got my vote as the newcomer of the year because he was fantastic. He could hurt you both with his legs and with his arm. Yeah, he's that dual threat quarterback, and it's hard to come in as a transfer quarterback, it's, especially without taking a year to digest yep. the offense. It, it's not like he was here in spring ball. No. I mean, he was at Northern Illinois. He came in over the summer, learned the playbook, you know, steadily, I think, as the season has pro progressed. And now that it's 14 games into it for Illinois State, 15 games into it for NDSU. You can't say he's a newcomer anymore no. because he's already had a season and then some under his belt. This guy is the guy I think they're going to have to watch out for. That's Marshawn Coppridge, who was the player of the year on the offensive side of the football for Illinois State. Guy who did no FCS offers, which is still staggering to me, but has tore up every defense in the Missouri Valley, including Northern Iowa, something that NDSU did not do this season. You get a lot of guys that don't have a lot of offers yeah. at time to time. You see those come on. The FCS is great for the late developing kid because a lot of the FBS is your, your kids are offered after their junior year for yeah. the most part. And, that, and a lot of times you don't see kids develop until even during their senior year or afterward. And Marshawn Copperich is one of those guys. Remember him last year? No. I don't either. Yeah, he had 60 some odd yards in the game against NDSU. Right. And he was a non factor. Right. So, what happened in the year from last year to this year? Well, he's developed like a lot of kids. And number five is a big reason why, too. I think that's. And, it. and a bigger threat at quarterback. <laughs> Absolutely. Their wide receivers, Jeff, are dynamic, though. Lashed Neblett and Cameron Meredith are big guys that the NDSU corners, which we talked about against Sam Houston State, they had a great game against Sam Houston because defensive pressure got to uh, Sam Houston State all game long. That's going to be another key, I think, in this game because the wide receivers are huge for Illinois State. Well, another day, another game against <laughs> big wide receivers. I think NDSU's seen it almost the whole playoffs, starting with South Dakota State. You had 6'4", you had 6'3", with Jason Schneider. Sam Houston had some big guys. Okay, Brown is huge. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I thought Coastal's receivers. Alex although, Ross was huge, you know. Although not real big <clears throat> stage they were just really yeah. good. So, uh, Cameron Meredith is an interesting story. He was a quarterback until yeah. two years ago before making the switch. To re you see that a lot. You see quarterbacks, yeah. if they don't make the number one depth chart on, at, at that position, a la Esley Thornton, Esley Thornton yeah. you find somewhere else to go, and that's what Cameron Meredith has done. You mentioned earlier about Illinois State's defense. We've talked all about, and glowingly so, about their offensive personnel. Defensively wise, they have a guy in the, in the middle by the name of Pat Meehan, their middle linebacker, who is tremendous. He's going to be fixated on number 23 in John Crockett on Saturday. Of course, and Pat Meehan's their Grant Olson, yeah. I think, uh, of this team. You talk about Grant Olson two years ago. He was a linebacker. The Cal, as you call them. They can't afford to lose. Yeah, the player, they, they most afford cannot to lose. Yeah. But uh, I think he's that guy. Nick DeLuca is going to have to grow up mm -hmm. a lot in a hurry as a middle linebacker for NDSU in this game. Uh, this type of game situation. He's been pretty good so far in the playoffs, but now this adds a whole new dimension as far as run pass threat with Copperich and Roberson. Injury update. Zach Ross' status is still highly yeah. questionable is what Chris Kleiman said today. I was at practice last Tuesday and saw Vra running. He told me feels pretty good, but still hasn't had any kind of practice reps yet. Now, is this a guy that he can just go out and play Saturday? Because I think he needs at least a day of practice. Well, I, I, I think you need a week to go through the game plan, mm -hmm. but uh, I guess you're a senior. He's been around a long time. It's his fifth year of school. Uh, maybe he can just show up on Thursday and Friday and go, I don't I'm know. I'm in. You know? I, yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it yeah. personally. But in any issues, it's not like it's a, a throw-all-the-time offense. Nope. But if you can get him a few plays, but 
you, you, it's not like you're a tight end. Tight end, you have short routes. You know, a wide receiver, if you don't have that ability to show a breakaway deep, ability, teams yeah. will jam you like you wouldn't believe, and you're not going to get off the line of scrimmage. Mike Hardy's health looks like it's A-OK -okay after suffering a high ankle sprain against Sam Houston State. Chris Kleiman said today, Jeff, in his uh, news conference, that he believes Hardy's health is before Iowa State, which is huge considering that Roberson can run with the best of anybody. Well, and you need experience going against yeah. a defense like this because with that zone option read threat or whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, it, it presents the defensive lineman a couple of conflicts that they have to read instantly. And if you're not experienced and you haven't seen it before, it could be a long day. Hardy, that's the maybe his career highlight happened in Frisco, Texas. For Bison fans will remember, yeah. of course, the championship game in 2013 where he caught the two-point pass uh, from Adam Keller there in the end zone what, in the most remarkable thing you'll ever see. It was one of those ESPN moments <laughs> and what we've seen a lot it was of number NDSU one that night. ESPN moments. Experience-wise, let's talk about that. Obviously, Illinois State going through this for the first time. The Bison, for a majority of these guys, this is trip number four. How big a factor is it a factor on Saturday? Well, I think a bigger factor is almost it'll be a home field advantage crowd-wise for NDSU. Uh -huh. I still think, in, in talking to people and, and people in the know on the crowd situation, that you're looking at fifteen to 17,000 NDSU fans, and that leaves you about maybe three Illinois yeah. State fans, and that's a decided advantage. Uh, I still think... Illinois State better be prepared for the silent count at a neutral field. <laughs> also, the weather for the first time. We have yeah. to talk about that. The last three years we've been there, game day, it's, it's been overcast. I remember the first year, but the sun peaked out. The last two years, it's been a brilliant day. Weather forecast right now, Jeff, chance of rain and 35 degrees and some wind. How will that play into the game? Well, the wind, I think, more than anything, will be the biggest factor because wind, of course, affects yeah. football in any way, shape, or form. 30 degrees is okay for a football team. You're out there, you're hitting, you're running around. You know, the fans won't be as great, no. but and that's unfortunate. You know, when you go south from North Dakota, it'd be nice <laughs> if it was a little warmer than 35 degrees. But, it, you know, you can't control the weather, obviously, if you're yeah. the coach. And I don't, if it doesn't rain, I, I see the weather being a non-factor. Illinois State, by the way, has practiced outdoors for a majority of this time in the break. Uh, just I maybe to get acclimated for it. Obviously, they have no other situation where they can go indoors to practice for the Redbirds. So that's uh, maybe, I don't know if it's an advantage for them. Granted, the Bison have been in the bubble the last couple days when the rumble on the Red Tournament was going on at the Fargo. Dom, do you know what the temperature is outside right now? It's negative six for us. It's minus 11 <laughs> on my car. If you're walking around in Fargo, North Dakota, <laughs> minus 11, I think 35 30 is not going to be a big deal. Pretty good. Let's talk real brief before we wrap up about hoops. The Summit League opener for both the Bison men and women was this weekend, and Jeff, NDSU goes 4-0 and on the women's and the men's side. Perhaps the most surprising win, I'm going to say it, was what Marn Wall says team did, beating South Dakota State yesterday, first time at home since February of 2005. Well, they came out ready to play, that was obvious, and this uh, player, number four, yeah, Brooke Lamar, was good. outstanding in the first half, 23 points, and, you know, but the team didn't panic because you knew South yeah. Dakota State was going to make a run. run. And South Dakota State is the more talented team. There's just no doubt about it. They're up and down the lineup. They're bigger, stronger, faster. But uh, NDSU is better coached than they have been in the past yep. years. I don't, uh, that's got to be the, the, the difference, it has right? To be. It has to yeah. be. I don't know what else you can point to. It's essentially the same players that we had in the last couple of years. They went and beat Oral Roberts. I know it's not the Golden Eagles team from a couple of years ago, but that's still a solid win. To start 2-0 and in league play, I don't know who anybody saw that happening for the Bison women. No, I, if you look at this roster based on last year, they won two Summit League games yeah. all of last yeah. year. They've already equaled last year's win total. I, I didn't think this team would reach 10 all year. Mm. Now we'll see. I mean, it's at, what, 6 They're right six. now? Yep. There's still some work to be done. But in this Summit League, uh, if they play like that or even close to that, uh, they'll get to 10, <laughs> there's no doubt. The Bison mm. men hang on and beat Oral Roberts on Friday and then come back. They were up 20 on South Dakota State and nearly gave that one away but hung on and got the win over the Jackets. Biggest difference this team right there, right there. Dexter yeah. Warner has just uh, elevated his game like nobody ever saw it. I mean, he was one of those guys that came off the bench when I was like up 20 last year, <laughs> and he didn't even play well at that, I no. think. You just kind of looked a little lost out there. But it just goes to show you, you just hang with something, and you build your body, and, uh, you work at it. I think uh, whatever he's done in the weight room, whatever the weight training staff has done with him, has been remarkably effective. And uh, he's that one guy they really needed to some help from. They have one senior on the team and he's playing like a superstar, maybe the MVP of the Summit League in Lawrence Alexander with a 30-point game against Oral Roberts Friday, another great game yesterday against the Jacks. Well, he's a senior guard, he's a leader. Uh, you know, he's that guy, he's uh, to this team what Ben Woodside was yeah. to the Fab Four in the 2009 team. 
I think he's that good. He's got he's certainly a calming presence out there. When things got tight down the stretch against Jackrabbits yesterday, they gave it to Lawrence, mm. and he was able to you know hang on to the lead. Dave Richmond said today, Western Illinois, IUPUI are a combined three and zero. No one would have saw that, Jeff. I had them eighth and ninth in my preseason poll. I know we're one week into it, but can if we're being prisoner of the moment, I guess I'll apologize for that, but. Is the chance for this team even better than we thought to maybe do something in March? You know what I see in this league right now? I see a lot of average. A lot of parity. I, I don't, yeah. Well, parity, I call it average. <laughs> a lot of mediocrity, okay. if you will. Yeah. I, I just don't see anybody really great. I don't see anybody really low. It's not like a couple of years ago where right. you had a Keith Benson or a Nate Walters or a Taylor Braun. It's not like that. Yeah, and yes, you can make this tournament because I, unless somebody really improves yeah. from this point on until March... Uh, you know, it's anybody's ball game to get the big dance bid. They're the first team, and you just tweeted this out, first Summit League team to get 10 wins. You didn't think that was going to happen no. by NDSU. The, Did the you? First. No, no way. Yeah, and, you lose all that firepower yeah. from last year, yep. and you come out and you're 10 at 5. Playing with seven guys, basically. And you're playing with seven guys. That <laughs> tells me the rest of the league is, is just okay. The Bison, Jeff, they win six more games. They're, they're going to make a postseason tournament. We saw it. We saw it a few years ago. They made the CBI with a team that was really talented and still got in. They can make a postseason and tournament. And is there six more wins left in the schedule? Absolutely. 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 This early on. The Bison men will go to Omaha later this week. The Bison women have a home game with IUPUI before they head out on the road. Of course, we're heading out on the road on Wednesday. Our daily video blogs start on Wednesday from Frisco, Texas. That's become a staple as well. So look for that live. Fargo to Frisco, also become a tradition. Friday night, live, 7 yep. o'clock on WDAY and WDAY.com. Jeff will join me along with Big E, a cast of thousands, live from the Allen Event Center on Friday night. And then game day on Saturday. We'll be live at 8 a.m. with our Bison Media blog pregame show. Then Cole Pack and Izzo inside Toyota Stadium. From 9 to 11, it should be a fantastic day as we get to see who will win the 2014 FCS season. Well, giddy up, as they say in Absol Texas. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll see you on Wednesday, everybody, from Frisco.